Uh, I think I might have asked this uh, a few months ago, actually. But um, are you familiar with the Ahmadiyya sect of Islam uh, that was started in India? Yeah, and it's a major problem in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I know that uh, the current government there is very opposed to Ahmadiyya. Like, it's not recognized. Yeah. Not, yeah. Well, and actually just in general in the Muslim world, um, Ahmadis are usually very heavily persecuted. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I guess uh, I just wanted to discuss that a little bit um, and ask about your opinion regarding, um, I guess, the general, your familiarity with the beliefs of the Ahmadi and also like the, uh, mm, I guess, social or political affiliations of different groups as associated with Ahmadiyya, the sect. So like, for example, um, you know, the, the big issue, not the only issue, but one of the biggest issues that most other Muslims have is the fact that Ahmadis have uh, another prophet who they claim is a prophet who came after Muhammad. And so yeah. that's, that's just, that's not, that's not halal. That's not, that's not okay with a lot of Muslims. Um, so uh, they also have a non-political as far as I'm aware, non-political caliphate that they claim to be a continuation of the uh, the first caliphate that occurred shortly after the death of Muhammad, several centuries back, um, which has some, I don't believe headquarters, but several sites located within the United Kingdom. So I guess I wanted to ask your opinion regarding Ahmadi beliefs, your familiarity with them, and uh whether there's any um friction or contention uh regarding an organization that calls itself a caliphate having locations and mosques within the united kingdom all right so this is very interesting okay so here's the points i have okay so first of all the the, the Ahmadis have managed to bring a lot of Sunnis and Shias together and unite them against them, right? Mm -hmm. Because of how controversial, how un-Islamic their ideas sound, okay? So Ahmadis and Baha'is, especially Ahmadis because they insist that they're Muslim, uh, really challenge the definition of a Muslim, right? And whether we could have definitions of Muslims that are more inclusive, or less inclusive, right? So they are a good example to always point to, right? So what sorts of beliefs um, makes you a Muslim, right? Um, yeah. Because unlike what a lot of people think, a Muslim is not necessarily a person who does the right things. You could be a Muslim that constantly sins and goes to hell, but you're still a Muslim because being a Muslim is mostly an identity based on the beliefs that you have, not necessarily the actions that you take. You could be a good Muslim or a bad Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. So mo uh, many, I don't want to say most because that might be controversial, but many Muslims and most Islamic scholars, well, actually, let me just say many. Many Islamic scholars and many Muslims would consider not considering Muhammad the last prophet to put you out of the definition of who's a Muslim, right? So the the uncontroversial parts that is there's no disagreement over is that to be a Muslim, you have to believe in Tawheed, in the oneness of Allah as the only God with no partners, right? That's a fundamental concept. The second most fundamental part is to believe that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. He's the Rasulullah, right? Mm -hmm. The third fundamental part, which is some people consider it, belief in it as necessary upon part of the condition of being a Muslim, and some people don't, that's a huge debate, is in, in the belief in the afterlife, okay? But that is debatable if, because if you listen to the Shahadat, it doesn't have that, right? You say, Ashadu Anna, La ilaha illallah, which means I testify that there's no God other than Allah, which is the concept of Tawheed. And then you say, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, 
and he basically means I testify that Muhammad is the prophet of God, right? Is sent by God. Mm -hmm. Um, but it doesn't say the last prophet of God, right? The the Shahada doesn't say the seal of the prophet; it just says prophet, right? Mm -hmm. So now, but but a lot of people say that that is given. Like for you to be a Muslim, you can't just accept Muhammad as a prophet. You have to accept Muhammad as the seal of all prophets. This is the last prophet. And if you don't, you're not a Muslim. Interesting. Seem, yeah. Uh, so just to ask really quickly, is that something that is just kind of, a, it's evolved culturally or are there hadith or other scripture that people cite in order to back up that, that claim? Oh, no. Yeah, I mean, no, no. The fact that Muhammad is this seal of the prophet is is scripture, okay? But I guess they could play with the interpretation of what the seal means, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, to technically, if you want to go, you could. It's it's in the favor of the people who the scripture is in the favor of people who say that Muhammad is the last prophet. Okay, so the scripture actually supports their view, I think, okay? So I'm pretty sure if, the, if there was an Ahmadi here, they would object and they would come up with their interpretation for why that's not true, okay? But we could that's that, we could debate that, okay? Right. But most Muslims, the vast, okay. So here, okay, let me make two statements. The vast, vast, vast majority of Muslims agree that Muhammad is the last prophet, okay? But a smaller percentage, but I think still vast, believe that it's true and it's necessary for you to believe that to be a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So some people could say like, oh, I as a Muslim believe that Muhammad is the last prophet, but I'm not going to say that if you don't believe that, you're not a Muslim. I could say that you're still a Muslim who's wrong about some parts of Islam. Mm -hmm. But... That is not how a lot of other Muslims see it. I'm going to say a lot, and probably a majority, probably, I don't know, I haven't seen any polls on this. A majority of Muslims think like, no, if you say that Muhammad is not the last prophet, it's more than you just being a Muslim who's wrong about parts of Islam. It's actually, if you believe that, then you're not a Muslim. Mm. Right? Right. I'm right. Sure. Okay. So... Um, the Ahmadis, I think, have been attempting to show their version of Islam as a lot more moderate um, and peaceful um, as a way to promote more acceptance about their version of Islam compared to, I don't know, Sunnis and Shias, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, their scriptures, though, is still pretty insane. Like, it's very anti-Semitic. It's very anti, you know, they have their own even additional yeah. crazy views, right? Yeah. But but in effect, it's true that they are, like, I don't, like, just the name, the fact that they have a caliphate, like, I think that is not as alarming as ISIS, just because ISIS also called what they have a caliphate, and they also call what they have a caliphate. That by itself doesn't mean that they are, like, even remotely close to that, right? So I am more in favor of challenging their beliefs without suggesting that they are dangerous radicals just because what they have is called the caliphate because it's not even remotely close. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be worried about. I wouldn't be worried about that. Well, that yeah, sense. yeah. Well, and uh, it's not so much a matter of whether there's anything to be worried about. As far as I'm aware, I haven't been. I'm not aware of any, I mean, I could be wrong because I haven't looked into it deeply enough to know for certain. I'm not aware of specific radical groups within, you know, the group that calls itself a caliphate that's associated with Ahmadiyya. Just the fact that they use, in English, they use that particular word. Um, if English speakers ever, um, you know, since ISIL and all of that happened, if there's ever been any contention regarding just the naming, I suppose, of their group. But uh, okay, yeah, that makes total sense. It's, it's also very interesting, especially since uh, historically speaking, in more modern times regarding the spread of Islam, 
in India and uh, modern India, as well as Africa and even the Americas, Canada and the United States. Um, a lot of the, uh, I guess you could say, more or less homegrown versions of Islam that were developed in the Americas were inspired by Ahmadiyya in like the mid 20th century. So, yeah, very interesting yeah. stuff. You can see in Pakistan, for example, this is such a huge issue that a lot of politicians, their all their slogans is highlighting not that Muhammad is the prophet, but the last prophet. You know what I mean? Like, and a very this you have to signal how sta how strongly you're standing against any Ahmadiyya claim. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. you have to signal, it's about signaling it stronger than the next politician. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. pocket more than, you know, if you go into a lot of Islamic countries, you see like the constant mention of Muhammad being a, the Rasulullah or prophet of God, Allah, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere. But in Pakistan, you see more insistence on mentioning the last part. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In order of to. An, mm -hmm. Yeah, as an anti ahmadi stance. In order to preserve the traditionalism, in order to preserve the original line, the original Sunni idea of Islam. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. And also, in, I don't know if you know about this, in Pakistan, uh, your passport application requires you to say that Ahmadi uh, is not Islam. Yeah, they're listed as their own separate religion, which actually... Because no, no, no. Of, no, it's not yeah. that, it, it's not that, like, it's not, this is not just for Ahmadis. Mm -hmm. Anybody who in in Pakistan, whether you're Ahmadi or not, you have to testify that you know that Ahmadiyas are not Muslim. Oh, just anyone in general? Anyone in general. You could be a Sunni Muslim, a Christian. In order to get your passport, you have to declare that Ahmadis are not Muslim. Wow. Even on the website, is even on the website, there's a part where you have to check that. That you wow. declare that Ahmadis are not Muslim. Wow. Yeah, that's that's uh, surprising. Or else you're not, or else you're not going to get your passport. Huh. Interesting. Okay. That's so, how that's how that's how sensitive they are about this. <laughs> but you're going. Gotcha. So so it sounds like in Pakistan specifically, Ahmadis are seen as a bit of a potential political threat. Um, I mean, in Pakistan, a religious threat is a political a political threat. Right, given, yeah. that, <laughs> given that everything about policy, Pakistan identity is Islam, yeah. Right. Then. Okay. Yeah. So anything, even if it's just a a morphing or a reinterpretation of Islam, is considered to be a threat or yeah. a potential threat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. By the way, somebody in the live chat is asking, would that come under the No True Scotsman fallacy? It depends on how you define a Muslim. Okay, because there are certain if, if based on my definition of a Muslim, it would be a no true Scotsman fallacy. But if you are somebody who defines a Muslim as somebody who believes Muhammad to be the seal of the prophets, then it would not be a no true Scotsman fallacy, right? So, for example, if you say that, uh, a, you know, a, a, a true Scotsman would never behave like that, that would be a no true Scotsman fallacy. But if you say, oh, this person has not been born in Scotland, has never been to Scotland, and his parents are not Scottish, therefore he's not a Scotsman, then in that situation, or like nobody in his ancestry is a, Scot Scot a Scottish, in that situation, based on a definition of a Scotsman, you can safely say that that person is not a Scotsman, right? So, I mean, at some point, if you are outside of the definitions, then you're not committing the fallacy. So the question is, what is the definition? Right. So in this case, trying to utilize that fallacy would be something along the line for Ahmadis. If 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 someone who did not recognize them as Muslim were to try to do so, would be like, uh, no true Muslim would accept any prophet after Muhammad. And then if the opposition were to say, but uh, I'm an Ahmadi, and I have my prophet who came after Muhammad. Then the counter argument would just be, but no true Muslim would accept a prophet after Muhammad. Something. Yeah. yeah. Those well. Lines. Yeah. 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 I mean, but yeah. I mean, it depends on the definition. If you agree with the definition, 
then you're not committing the fallacy. But if you don't agree with the definition, then you're committing the fallacy. Yeah. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.